Papalia is an upcoming MMO offering a cozy adventure that you can experience alongside friends and the wider community, but there are also many villagers living in the world who you can choose to befriend and maybe even romance. So let's meet them. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Sunstone and today I will be discussing the relationship mechanics for Palea and we'll introduce you to all the confirmed characters. We have a lot to cover today, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. In Palea, 23 villagers have been confirmed so far. Remember, just as a quick refresher, in Palea, humans are a legendary race who disappeared for thousands of years before beginning to re-emerge around the world. This means that the residents of Kilima village are not human. The most prevalent culture in Palea is the Majiri, an elf-like race unique to Palean culture. The Majiri pride themselves on tradition, hospitality, and community. These are their core values. In Palea, you will also encounter Grimalkin, a cat-like race that has arrived from outer space. Grimalkin possess two pairs of ears, a long bushy tail, retractable claws on their hands, and can walk on their hind legs. Finally, in the cast of villagers, you will also meet Galders, which are robot-like creatures who have been around for thousands of years. Galders have been programmed with something called oneness, which is the one thing in the world that makes them happy. Think of it as a passion. Overall, the team has stated that they want to make sure the characters in Palea feel rich and meaningful, prioritizing deep backstories and connections with other characters for both romance and friendship options. Out of the 23 villagers, you will be able to romance a selection of them once you reach a certain level of friendship. So next, let's get into how exactly you will befriend and grow relationships with the characters. In the latest first look at official gameplay, the team shared two different ways to gain friendship points with any and all villagers. The first way to gain points is to talk to the characters once every Palean day, which is different from a real world day. A Palean day resets every hour of real world time, so you can talk to the characters and gain points once every hour. In this clip, you can actually see the friendship icons reacting to the player's conversations with Zeki, likely indicating a boost in relationship. The second option is to give the villagers gifts once every real world day, so about every 24 hours of real life time. The characters will also have weekly wants, which are special gifts that will award you with extra points when given. You can discover what the villagers' weekly wants are by talking directly to them or to their friends. Once you discover these items, they will show up in the weekly want section of the friendship user interface or your reference. There's actually quite a bit that we can see and speculate on in the friendship tracking user interface, so let's break it down piece by piece. Starting with the list of characters on the left hand side, we can spot blue dialogue bubbles over some of their portraits, which I'm guessing would be to indicate that a villager has new dialogue available for us. Here you can also see which level you're at with each character. For example, this player is at friendship level 2 with Ashura and friendship level 1 with Ani. Further, while some villagers have just one meter available for friendship, others also have a secondary meter for romance. So, looking at this list, we can basically confirm which characters will and will not be romanceable for the beta release of the game. It is, however, worth noting that not all 23 characters are included in this UI. I'm guessing that's because the current player has yet to meet everyone in their gameplay. But anyway, we'll go over which characters are confirmed so far as being romanceable when we meet them individually later in the video. I also just wanted to point out that there will be icons next to each character's name when you interact with them, indicating whether they are available just for friendship or also romance. So it should be really easy to figure out who your options are while you're in the game between this feature and the relationship UI. Back to the breakdown, on each individual character's page, we can see the tracker for their weekly wants on the top right of the page, as well as some text next to the friendship icon. Below this, we can see a more detailed relationship meter, indicating what your current friendship level is with them, and how close you are to the next level. Currently, it appears that there are four available levels per character. In this particular clip, we can see a text box appear when hovering over level 2 for Zeki that states, Quest is now available, talk to the villager or check mail to activate. 
So it seems that you might actually unlock a new quest for each friendship level. The title of the quest for Zeki, Just Business, seems to tie back to the text we saw above that says Zeki has some business that clearly isn't on the up and up, but he seems to have his reasons. I'm guessing that this piece of text will change up for each quest, which will be really helpful to give us a brief refresher of where we left off with each character's story if we get busy with other tasks around Pelia or take some time away from the game. Also looking at this meter, at each level of friendship, we can spot different icons that are consistent across characters. At level two, there is a heart icon, and at level three, there is a picture of a key shown next to an icon of the villager's face. I'm not sure what these might indicate, but at level four, it appears that you will actually unlock a unique item for each character. You can see different images of items shown for each villager's level four status, and this is really exciting to me because I love exclusive, unlockable items. Finally, for the relationship UI, there is text found at the bottom of the dateable character's profiles stating that we must reach level three friendship with this villager to unlock and even though we can't see the end of the sentence, I'm guessing it's something along the lines of unlocking the romance, meaning that we will need to reach level three of friendship with these characters to unlock some sort of romance meter and likely begin leveling this up separately from friendship, perhaps with unique quests. I know a lot of the details that I pointed out in the relationship UI may just seem to be minor, but I personally think they go to show how much thought the team has put into implementing lots of nice quality of life features that will really help and enhance your experience. So I definitely think they're worth acknowledging. If you're not terribly drawn to the romance aspects of Palea, there's no need to worry. This experience is completely optional. Think of it as an addition to your gameplay, because even though there will be romance storylines, the main story for each character is found in their friendship stories. To be clear, you will not have to romance characters to unlock gameplay or progress any main storylines. But that's not to say the romance will be neglected by any means. It too will feel meaningful and satisfying. It's just that relationships in Palea don't need to be romantic in order to be meaningful. For those of you who are interested in romance, exactly how many characters can we date? Well, in Palea, you can actually romance as many villagers as you would like. According to the team, in the current state of the game, you can go as far as the early courting stage with the dateables. And once you reach the end of the available romance plot lines, the characters will give you a special pin that you can wear. Other villagers will actually comment on these pins, acknowledging your relationships, which I think is just so sweet. And if you have two favorite characters, you can actually equip up to two pins at a time. All right, so that was a lot of information to cover. And now that we have a fairly good grasp on what we know so far about the romance and friendship mechanics in Palea, let's finally meet the 23 villagers that have been confirmed so far for the game. First up, we have Gina, an apprentice scholar at the Bahari Institute who is doing her thesis on the human reemergence. Gina loves old books, is always chasing a mystery, and yes, she is romanceable. She also has a Galder companion named Hecla, who we will meet next. Hecla was discovered by Gina among the ancient ruins scattered around Kilima village, and they have been inseparable ever since. Hecla has strong maternal instincts and can be heard singing old human lullabies. This pair of friends are the first two you will meet when you arrive in Palea. They will help you fund your footing and will set you off on your way in this new world. There's also another Galder character among the cast named Einar, who runs the fishing shack. Einar collects shiny objects, thinks pebbles are an acceptable gift, and talks about oneness a lot. And yes, it looks like Einar is actually romanceable, according to the friendship user interface we saw earlier. Next up, we will meet the Daya family, who work every day to keep their farm running smoothly. First in the family, we have Badru, who runs the produce side of the local family farm. It seems that bad luck finds him far too often, but hey, at least he tells really great dad jokes. Badru is married to Delilah, who sees every day as a new opportunity no matter how hard the last one was. She is stubborn, generous to a fault, and fiercely devoted to her family. So now let's meet Delilah and Badru's two kids. 
First is Ani, a child who is a big fan of humans. He delivers the mail in the village, is very good at keeping secrets, and claims he can outrun anyone. Then we also have Nayo, Ani's older brother who helps run the family farm. He always sees the best in people and is a hopeless romantic. And despite not being shown in the friendship UI, Nayo does appear to be romanceable based on what the team has shared. Apparently, Nayo and Kenyatta, the next character we will meet, have a little something going on between them. So you can actually choose to help them forge a connection or go for either one of them yourself. I think this could be quite the interesting dynamic. So of course next up is Kenyatta, a rebellious dreamer who has yet to declare her path. She's been given a job at City Hall to learn responsibility, but is very bored with it and really does not want to be there. She does have a soft side once you get to know her and likes to spend her free time at the stables. Apparently, she loves everything that her mom Eshi hates, so let's meet her next. Eshi was born into the elite governing class and is the village magistrate. She is frenemies with the Duchess and unhappily married to Mayor Kenley, who is previously known as Mayor Kenji. Ken Lee, the bumbling politician, is Kenyatta's dad and second child of a duke. He is a people pleaser whose opinion changes very easily, and apparently he talks a lot without saying much. Next up, let's meet Tamala, a skilled potion maker who lives in Bahari Bay. Now, Bahari Bay is actually one of the adventure zones for Palea, and without going on too much of a side tangent, adventure zones will be new areas to explore where you can collaborate with other players, find hidden treasures, resources, and more outside of Kilima Village. Over time, the team will be coming out with brand new adventure zones, as well as reasons to revisit previously explored zones. But back to Tamala, she apparently has the best beauty secrets, is a romanceable character, and was a former lover of Hassion's who we will meet next. Hassion is often found brooding at the pier or hunting in the woods with his companion Tao. He is very protective over the things he loves, which could include you because he is yet another romanceable candidate. Hassion also spends time helping his mother Sifu craft armor. Sifu is the blacksmith and was a famous monster hunter in her heyday. You will have the chance to learn about her incredible exploits at her smithy or the local inn where she enjoys spending her time. Uh, and apparently it's important that we know she never skips leg day. A little heads up if you plan to get to know this mother-son pair, we have been warned to tread with caution when speaking to Hassion about their family ties as it seems they have some history to work through. Next, let's meet Ashura, who runs the Ormuz Horn Inn and is the father figure of the village. He tells great stories, regularly visits the Remembrance Garden, and has a broom made from a repurposed sword. He also won't be upset if you get him a bad gift. He'll simply be disappointed. Then we have Chain, the sage, who genuinely tries to see the good in others. He loves to study the stars at night and is seen as an especially soothing presence in Palea, always ready with a word of wisdom and understanding of others' perspectives. Further, he's responsible for guiding the villagers through birth and death. You can find him on long walks contemplating existence or enjoying a thoughtfully prepared vegan meal. Chain is a longtime friend of Ashura and Shep of Hassion and Sifu. Shep is a Majiri word with a similar meaning to mentor. In Majiri society, joining a village is a rite of passage. So certain tasks must be completed and you must find a Shep who officially sponsors you and teaches you the ways of the village. So perhaps someday you'll need to seek out a Shep yourself to help you find your path to acceptance into Kilima. Next up is Breath, who works the day shift at the inn. He is prone to acting before thinking and believes his all lettuce soup is the talk of the town. He originally moved to Kilima Village with his younger sister Tish, who we will meet next. Tish considers furniture crafting an art and loves accessorizing with her flower hair clip, which was actually a gift from Reth. Tish originally moved to the village to recover from a health condition and she never ever has a harsh thing to say about anyone. And yes, Tish is romanceable. Then we have Jell, the youngest of six siblings from the illustrious Omiata family. Jell is a skilled tailor and lover of fashion, always dressed to the nines and never has a bad hair day. Jell teach us your secrets. He takes nightly walks to ponder his craft, and yep, you can date him too. Next up, we have a pair of twins, 
Eloisa and Kaleri. Eloisa studies the ruins for signs of unusual activity and has an incredibly active imagination. She has no shortage of theories on pretty much everything, but for some reason, she is rarely seen in the same location as her twin sister. Kaleri is the village librarian who values those who value knowledge. She is mistrustful at first, but very reliable. It sounds like you might have to work extra hard to earn her trust, but that she will be very loyal to you once you do so. Next up is Hodari, a miner and man of few words. He prefers to work alone, loves steak, dislikes fish, and has a child named Najuma. Najuma is a skilled tinkerer who can take apart and put together any gadget, but is not good with small talk. She may appear shy at first, but is actually quite chatty about her interests. And it just so happens that she's always finding creative ways to test explosives, which sounds completely fun and safe, if you ask me. Last but not least, we have Zeki, a Grimalkin who runs the general store in the village. He loves a good joke, probably at your expense, and is against regulations. In fact, Zeki actually runs the Kilima branch of the Grimalkin Underground, a sort of black market style system where you can acquire some unique magical items, for example, some more high-tech stuff that wouldn't typically be available in the village. So those are all the villagers that have been confirmed for Palea so far, including the Romanceable candidates. I think it's also important to note that in the latest official look at gameplay, the Palea team stated that there may be some characters that are not romanceable yet who will be in the future. Personally, I noticed that all of the currently confirmed romanceable characters fall into the young adult age bracket, and I think it would be really nice to see some older adults also being added to the cast of Datables, but that's just my opinion. Overall, I'm really excited to get to know all of these characters, their backgrounds, and stories. Well, there you have it, friends. I think that covers just about everything we know so far about the characters, friendship, and romance in Palea. Let me know which of the villagers among the cast stood out to you the most, and if you're interested in the dating mechanics, who is your top pick to pursue so far? Anything and everything, you know I always love hearing from you. Please give the video a like if you're excited for Palea. And with all that being said, thank you so much for watching, I love you all, and until next time, take care. And a very special thanks to Meredith, Ormodis, Tansy, Cisco, Cheese, Divine Raven, Blossom, James, Paul, Jack, Danny, Starry Days, Kelly, and Kimmy, my beautiful Sunstone members. I love you all very much and thank you so, so much for the extra support on the channel, which really helps to make all that I do possible and means the world to me.